Hey guys, it's Chris. From their large size and terrible bite, these creatures have a bad reputation. Here are 11 interesting and scary facts about Komodo dragons. Number 11. They're the largest lizard in the world. When you look at a Komodo dragon, one of the things you immediately notice is their size, and for a good reason. Measuring at up to 10 feet in length and weighing over 300 pounds in certain cases, the Komodo dragon without a doubt is the largest living lizard in the world right now. Actually, 366 pounds was the largest weighing Komodo dragon ever recorded. They're also the most aggressive lizard in the bunch, which means it's just as scary as you'd think it would be given its intimidating appearance. You might be wondering though, how did the Komodo dragon become so large when the other lizard species rarely if ever grow that big? That would be because of giantism on the islands of Indonesia where it was discovered. Some even believe that their size is due in part to the genes they share with ancient creatures that used to live in that area and in Australia such as the Megalania. Regardless of how it got its size, it's the largest of its kind and that makes it a threat to any who approach it. Number 10. They are venomous. While lizards are known to bite and be aggressive at times, having venom is not something that is their definitive trademark. In fact, while it's believed that a hundred species of lizard have venomous bites or glands, only a handful have been confirmed, including the Gila monster and the Mexican bearded lizard. However, in 2009, it was uncovered that another lizard could be added to that list, the Komodo dragon. Sailors have always brought back stories and legends of a real-life dragon who spat venom, but it was hard for people to believe it was real. At first, it was found because of an MRI of a skull of a Komodo dragon that had been preserved. When it was looked at, the lower jaw was found to have not one, but two glands of potential venom. Then researchers went and found a terminally ill Komodo dragon from within the Singapore Zoological Gardens, extracted one of its venom glands, and examined it. When they did, they confirmed that there were venomous proteins within the glands, proving definitively that Komodo dragons are poisonous beings. The known functions of these proteins include inhibition of blood clotting, lowering the blood pressure, muscle paralysis, and the induction of hypothermia, leading to shock and loss of consciousness in envenomated prey. However, while some feel this is indeed definitive proof that the Komodo dragon has venom within it, others argue that the protein could be for other uses. According to these scientists, Reptilian oral secretions contribute to many biological roles, other than to quickly dispatch prey. These researchers concluded that calling all in this clade venomous implies an overall potential danger that does not exist, misleads in the assessment of medical risks, and confuses the biological assessment of their biochemical systems. So do they or don't they have venom? It's hard to tell without examining what they bite down on and eat which given the aggressive and ravenous nature of Komodo dragons is obviously not easy to do. Number 9. A Komodo Dragon Inspired King Kong If you were to try and recall some of the most impactful movies in the history of cinema, King Kong would most definitely be on that list. The movie may not hold up nowadays, though many reboots have tried to recapture the magic, but back then it was an impactful film about the life of a giant gorilla getting captured by man and being shown off to the world before going on a rampage ending in its death. What may surprise you, though, was that part of the film in King Kong's arc was inspired by a Komodo dragon. Confused? Well, let me explain. Filmmaker Marion C. Cooper had already thought about the notion of a giant gorilla coming to New York, but he couldn't figure out what would be a suitable climax for the film. Around this time, a man named Douglas Burden was bringing his own special creatures to America, Komodo dragons. Yes, Douglas was the man who helped bring the Komodos to worldwide prominence, but there was a catch. You see, the first few he brought over died in zoos not long after arriving, and thus he blamed the people of society itself for causing the dragons to die like they did. This was just the inspiration that Cooper was looking for, and thus the film had Kong getting put on display and then dying after breaking out. Another fun fact that might surprise you is that originally King Kong was set to fight a similarly gigantic Komodo dragon, and a real one was going to be used to make the fight happen, but money and logistics got in the way of that happening. Number 8. They can climb very well What makes a really good predator? Now there are many answers to this one question, but obviously, the one that people can agree on is that the best ones are multifaceted, meaning that they don't just have a killer bite or killer claws or venom, they can do a lot of different things to get prey. 
including some things that no one would expect. In regard to the Komodo dragon, it lives up to this expectation in many respects. Because not only is it large, and not only is it aggressive, and not only does it possibly have venom, it can also climb trees. To be clear, the climbing nature of the Komodo dragons are somewhat restricted to age. In this case, it's the young Komodos that have the urge to go and be climbers. In contrast, fully grown Komodo dragons, which to remind you can be over 10 feet long at times, prefer to be in burrows and stay out of the heat of the day. The young dragons are able to climb because of their very sharp claws. Technically speaking, an adult Komodo would be able to climb a tree. It'd just be harder given its body weight. Still, the thought of any sized Komodo climbing up a tree that you yourself are in would be a terrifying thought. Number seven, they're cannibals. Cannibalism in the animal world is not as rare as one might think. As it happens, from the lowly rabbit who eat their young to regain energy after breeding, all the way up to the Komodo dragon. In fact, it's stated that for some young adults, 10% of their diet is made up of baby Komodo dragons. Because of this, young Komodo will stay in trees not just because they like to climb, but to ensure that other Komodos, including their own parents at certain points, aren't able to reach them without much effort. But why go and eat another Komodo dragon? Why eat one of their own kind? The answer here lies in the islands of Indonesia where they live. While there are plenty of creatures to go after and potentially eat, the truth is that as the Komodo dragons get larger, they require more food to endure. As a result, they tend to eat their young or the young of others to ensure they keep going no matter what. To combat this, not only do younger dragons go and get to high places, they'll coat themselves in fecal matter and other substances in order to deter the advances of the adults. Number six, they can live for a long time. Lifespans of creatures vary from species to species, and obviously it can be hard to tell how long a creature truly lives if you haven't been with them since birth. In regard to the Komodo dragon, this presents a very unique challenge because of how isolated they are in the world. However, some studies have been done that have shown that Komodo dragons can live up to 30 years and possibly even longer. This would make it a predator that can truly last for a long time, and no doubt helps it reign as the apex predator of its island. A fascinating tidbit about its lifespan, though, is that in regard to the maturing process, it takes about eight to nine years in order to get to the mature stage. This long life would also help explain its eating habits, specifically in how it'll eat others of its kind, because as time goes on, it'll want to eat whatever it can to survive, including its own kind. Number five, they'll eat dead people. Komodo dragons are part of a special sect of lizards known as monitor lizards. Why is this important? Well, because monitor lizards have a very unique palate when it comes to their food, and that includes eating dead people. That's right. While usually the dragons will eat their prey when they're freshly dead, they are apparently not afraid to go so far as to eat something that's been dead for a while. And yes, that includes people. The people of the island of Komodo where the dragons live, and was actually named after them, found out about this the hard way after the dragons literally dug up graves and ate the contents. So to prevent this from happening again, they would put heavy rocks on the shallow graves they dug so the dragons can't get their loved ones. However, there's a twist. In Bali, some ancient tribes choose not to bury their dead, but instead feed them to the Komodo dragons themselves, which is an interesting way of getting rid of a body, but also honoring your dead should you believe that it was an honor. Facts like these are what have made people very afraid of Komodo dragons, because in their mind, this proves they have a taste for human flesh. Number four, complicated senses. Despite having been known about for a while, there is still some debate as to the true power and potential of the senses of the Komodo dragon. A great example of this is the hearing of the monitor lizard. For a while, people thought that they could hear in only certain frequencies, including being unable to hear low whispers or high-pitched noises. But eventually, that was debunked. In terms of eyesight, they have a balance of having good and bad vision. On one hand, when it's daylight out, they can see something that's a thousand feet away. But because they only have cones in their eyes, their eyesight in the dark is rather terrible. Just by way of comparison, humans have cones and rods, and that's why we have kinda decent night vision after adjusting. But in terms of its best sense, that would be smell. As with many other reptiles, the Komodo dragon primarily relies on its tongue to detect, taste, and smell stuff with its Jacobson's organ rather than with its nostrils. They swing their head from side to side as they walk, which helps them detect carrion from two and a half to almost six miles away. 
Just as intriguing, though, is that the scales on the Komodo dragon are so refined they can help add to the touch perception of the Komodo dragon. Yet, quite ironically, it only has a select few taste buds, and those are found at the back of the throat. Not what you would expect from something that eats everything in sight. Or maybe it is what you expect, because I imagine some things taste bad and maybe it wouldn't know. Number 3. Parthenogenesis. As a scientist once said, life finds a way. And for Komodo dragons, they did what many scientists swore could not be done have a child without fertilization. In regard to the Komodo dragons, this was first discovered all the way back in 2006, where in a zoo in London, a female Komodo dragon laid 11 eggs. The problem with this was that the male that used to be with this dragon named Flora hadn't been with her in over two years, so how could she lay eggs? At first, scientists thought she had stored genetic material from the male inside of her, but that was proven not to be true. Instead, she turned an unfertilized egg into an embryo and then laid an egg. There's an interesting catch here, though. And that is via this process known as parthenogenesis. All the eggs that hatch are going to be male. Which actually works, because that means, should worse come to worse, she could mate with her own child to have more children in a wider variety. This was proven twofold when a separate dragon in a zoo in China did the same thing. This was once thought to be impossible in complex creatures like Komodo dragons, but clearly it's not. This also means that barring a widespread death of females, the Komodo dragon species can live off just one female laying eggs, and then waiting for a new male to arrive to help make more females. Number 2. They have killed humans in the past. While it's true that Komodo dragons aren't opposed to eating the rotten flesh of human corpses, some have taken a more proactive approach in getting more fresh meat from live humans. Though deemed rare, there are several incidents involving humans in Komodo dragons. There are cases of Komodo dragons attacking people at zoos. There are numerous cases of Komodos attacking people who just so happened to be on their island at the time. They have even climbed up ladders and gone into people's offices and homes to attack them, despite the people not even interacting with the Komodo dragon in person. The fatality rate isn't as high as something like a shark, but the attacks have been well documented. Add to that the rather aggressive nature of the Komodo dragons, and it's fair to say that if you were to see one of them, you should just run the other way, and fast. Number 1. Gift to a President I want you to imagine that you are a dignitary to a foreign country, and you're about to meet the leader of another country and want to get him a gift. What would you consider giving them? Well, in the term of George H.W. Bush, the Indonesian government decided to give him the gift of a Komodo dragon, and not a baby one, a nine-foot-long one named Naga. Why the dragon was a gift is a bit of a mystery, but Bush knew that while it was precious, he couldn't keep it in the White House, so he donated the dragon to the Cincinnati Zoo. Naga was one of the biggest attractions at the zoo and lived to be 24 years old and sired 32 offspring. Thanks for watching. Which of these facts did you think was the most scary or perhaps the most interesting? Do you know of any other facts about Komodos that could have been on the list? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to World List and I'll see you next time.